Welcome to the Run With Chestnut podcast. This is episode 13, lucky number 13 for a very lucky subject. Today we are talking about running, basic introduction to running, what it takes, experiences, equipment, everything you need to know to get from a couch or lazy chair or a gaming station to a 5K finish line or any kind of running finish line. We're going to talk about our experiences, our individual uh, roles and how running takes part in our life. Some of us don't really run. Some of us run way too much. I don't like running, but I run anyway. I'm um, joined by Simon, the usual suspect. What's up, Simon? Hello, hello. Yep. And Melissa from Montenegro, international caller. Hello. There again. we go. <laughs> hello again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this episode is all about running. Now, I found out a statistic recently. And it's a it's a medical statistic, which I want to go over with you guys um, before we go into actual mechanics of running. And that statistic is, do you guys know what the leading cause of blindness is among American adults? Huh. No. Like, what causes blindness or, like, visual impairment? I was going to say old age, uh, but... <laughs> but, well, that or what about screen, like, uh, uh, computers and iPhone screens... They say that's pretty I bad. Don't actually know if there are any medical studies showing the connection between computer screens and a loss of vision. Huh. I don't know about that. That's good to look into. The one I was going for is diabetes, actually. So oh. if you're diabetic, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the leading and, and I only recently found that out uh, wow. from, a, from a panel I did a few <clears throat> weeks ago. Um all that to say that running isn't ne- isn't not necessarily just for you know, either being skinny or being fast. It's also about health, right? The three of us being blind folk, uh, (laughs) or people who are blind, politically correctly saying that. uh, Granted, none of us, none of us got blind because of diabetes. Right. But it's still a relevant subject, right? Like, people run for health reasons, too, or exercise in general for health reasons. It's not all about looking good and performing well. It's also just about being healthy. That's true. That's true. Right. So I think it's a it's an important thing to acknowledge because not everyone's goal is to get across the finish line at a certain time. Right. Right. Maybe your goal is just to keep some weight off and and, and live a little longer and a little happier life. Like that's a perfectly good goal as well. Yep. Makes sense. Cool. So let's get into this subject. Uh, Let's go around briefly and I'll try to be brief, even though I talk a lot. Um, And (laughs) let's just talk about in a few sentences what our history is is in, when it comes to running. Like, how much do we run? What have we done? Are we, like, ultra marathoners? Are we, you know, never run? So I will start off very briefly. I uh, started running, like, seriously, right? Not just, like, chasing an ice cream truck. I started running seriously about three years ago. I've done two marathons, a uh, whole bunch of shorter races, half marathons, 10Ks, 5Ks, multi-sport, like, triathlon, uh, 5Ks. So I've run, like, a few races. Um, I definitely prefer the shorter ones. Um, but there we go. Simon, history of running. Well, <clears throat> I started running around, would you say the same time you same did? Time, or yeah, exactly. A little after maybe. Um, <clears throat> and I have run casually. I have done uh, a bunch of, uh, well, a lot of, a couple of four mile races. I've done one half marathon and yeah. Um, I basically kind of run for fun and, uh, I do some races in between. Um, you, I will also uh, say, and the only reason why I'm saying this because I think it's important for people to hear, is that you you started two half marathons. Yes, but well, you only I, finished one of them. One of them, yes. And uh, that's something yeah. we'll talk about later on. Yes. But um, that that's that's something. Anyway, yeah. Uh, stay tuned, uh, Melissa. History of running. There yes, once, history of running. There, there once was a soccer field. There was a me. <laughs> There was a you and there was a person, another person. And um, you wanted a running partner. Um, and we... Listen, it's lonely running alone. Yeah. OK, well, um, yes. you had slim pickings, I will I will say. Um, and there was a tether and you taught me how to use a tether. And we supposedly ran one lap around the soccer field after which I wanted to die. And then you told me that you're not supposed to run. You're not supposed to run all out 
when you're running. So that is my history of running, is not running fast. Oh, yeah, I made that mistake. Running fast, but you're not supposed to run fast, apparently, <clears throat> which feel free to get into more later when you feel like it. But that was my big revelation about, huh, maybe running is not just running. Maybe there's more to it. See, this is uh, this is the whole reason why I have you on, because I, first of all, I completely forgot about that. Second of all, yeah, me too. I think you will outline some basic things that I just would not have not think of, co- you know, covering. For example, that, which is <laughs> probably the biggest mistake new runners make. And I totally made it when I first started running is so that we I. take off way too fast. Right. You did too. Yep. Yep. Well, no, cause when I, okay. So let's just actually, uh, before, like when I first ran, when I first did my first running workout, I, uh, that's what I thought running was. I thought it was literally like sprinting, sprinting as, as far yeah. as you can. And then you guys taught me, no, running is like jogging. It, that's when when people say they go running, they mean like it normally means. Well, I, I would or, I would sum oh. it up with with one word and uh, come a little closer to Michael time. But I, I would sum it up with one word and it's pacing, right? Ah, uh, pacing. The, the right. speed has nothing to do with it. It's it's you need to run at a at a speed that you're able to continue for the duration that you oh. want to run. Yes. Right. And the thing with beginners, with any beginner, including me, is we have no concept of what a sustainable speed is. No, we do not. You know? So, like, I mean, yeah. So... Well, but also, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I want to advocate for, like, a new word. That's maybe a little bit too much. But, you know, when usually you're like, run, run, catch your bus. Or, you know, like, run because we're playing tag. And so you want to run as fast as you can so you don't get tagged. Or, um, I mean, yes, that is also, I suppose, my history of running is playing tag with children. But, you know, like... And maybe it's also because I, um, because of being visually impaired, I was also in a different gym class, which maybe is another time um, conversation. But, you know, they, I at least didn't, they didn't tell me run, like what actual running is. And I don't know if that's just me or if that's a like misconception. Well, I guess you just did say that a lot of people would make it, but it doesn't seem to, I don't feel like I've heard it very much outside of athletes for running to be anything but running if you're you're chasing the bus you you clearly you're seeing the bus which means it's you know what like 50 to 100 feet away from you so Uh you sprinting would be an appropriate pace because it's a short short distance right you're not you're not running four miles to catch a bus that you're seeing like at the corner or so you know so but nobody's saying go go sprint sprint but 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 the distance is short. Okay, so is that? So that so that is appropriate pacing for the distance. You know, if you're sprinting to the corner of the block to catch a bus, that that the the, the appropriate pace would be to sprint in that situation. You know? Yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> and I learned also. You, I remember you telling me that uh, training for depending on what race you're training, whether you're training for a short distance or long distance, the way you train is different for each and the way you pace yourself is different for each too. Oh, it's, it's total. I mean, this is the first time I did a marathon. I mean, we could, we'll, we'll get into this mm-hmm. in a minute, but the way you, you train, you know, the first race for, for the first race for most people who did not start, you know, grow up doing track in Would high like school a, or college is a 5k, right? Either a 5k I'd say or a four mile. Yeah. Okay. 5K or 4 mile, right? 5K is 3.1 miles. 4 miles, obviously, is 4 miles. That's a pretty attainable distance for most people, right? The way you would train for that and the way you would train for a 10K, which is double or a half marathon or full, it's, compl- it's, it's, it's very different, right? And, and again, we'll get into that. But I think when I first started, I didn't understand that. I just thought, oh, running more. Yeah. You know? So did um, I. Which there's, there's part of that, but but anyway, uh, cool. So as you got, so, so I, I've run a few races. Simon's run a few races. Yeah. Melissa has never done a run, never right? Never done nope. a running race. Okay. Nope. Um, you've run <laughs> the 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 one lap we did around the soccer field <laughs> because it I was because, it was yeah. a valiant effort. Okay. Well, you know, didn't you also run once in the park with that in Central Park? Maybe. Oh shoot! I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. But I, it was, I guess that counts. I don't know if I was walking or running. Like the, the person who you was like with me walked, said, right. yes. And, and I feel like they might've been a little bit more kind to me than 
you know, because I was very out of my element, and I so uh, I might have been walking more than I was running, and and mm-hmm. I can't know because they would have been the only person to know what constitutes as as slow running and what is walking. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, and so they might have just first, said but, yeah. that, that I ran when I actually didn't. Yeah, so yeah. I, I will say right off the bat, it, like run walking is a perfectly reasonable way to get into running because it lets you, like, if you're only able to run for three four minutes at one time. And so you run three minutes, you walk two minutes, you run another three minutes, you walk two minutes, like getting to 30 minutes, let's say total that way versus just running, going as far as long as you can, say five minutes and then just stopping for the day. Doing that run walk is a great way to build into longer distances, 30, 40 minutes, you know, yeah. as, as, as a beginner. Um, That's how I did it. I remember. Yeah, me too. I've done it for like a year, though. It's, I think it was like a whole year um, that I've done the whole run walk thing. And then I, f- I got a guide. We all know who that was. Um, I got a guide. Yeah, who's your guide? Anthony. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anthony, uh, the first time I run w- ran with this um, guy named Anthony, he's like, okay, so I know you run and walk and you stop and stuff. How about let's try running without yeah. stopping? Yeah. How, how about you actually run? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it so much. Oh, <laughs> God. I remember that first time. When I did it without stopping, I felt like I was about to die. Anthony was laughing at me because of my dry <laughs> heaving sounds. Um, it was, but it you was, did it, it was, man. Uh, yeah. Which is the point, which is, I think, one reason why people like endurance sports is because it, it definitely pushes what you think is possible. Yeah. You know? And then, like, later on when you do it again and then again, uh, like, it doesn't really feel that bad. And then after that, you start to then speed it up or whatever. But, like you know then that you can run four miles without having to stop. Definitely. So and here's a question. Yeah, oh. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Why would you run when you can be perfectly content on your couch watching Netflix? Well, I would um, say starting off the, this whole episode, right? We talked about health. Like there's so many yeah. disease, you know, chronic illnesses and, and whatnot that is directly or indirectly caused by an unhealthy lifestyle, right? Hey, uh, sorry, Jessica, Mike? What's up? A little closer to you, Mike. Oh, really? Okay. Anyway, yes. Uh, okay, now I'm, now I'm lost my train of thought. There are a lot of health conditions, right, that are caused indirectly or directly. Like we were talking about diabetes. You have joint issues. You have longevity, whatnot. Um, that it does not take a crazy amount of exercise to impact that positively, right? Like you don't have to be a right. freak running, you know, 14 re- training sessions a week to do that. Like, I think the consensus is three times a week is sort of the sweet spot of where it starts coming down. The, the, the rate of diminishing returns start, start, start mounting, you know, mm-hmm. going from one time a week, two times a week, you see big improvement, two to three times a week, big improvement, you're going from three to like four or five, six times a week, then you're starting to see it sort of plateau a little bit, the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say the biggest, the most overlooked reason I would say to exercise at all is just the health reasons, you know, being well, a healthier a health, person. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, it's the health reasons, but also because, uh, for certain people, um, Melissa running kind of gives a high. Do you want to go more into that? Just yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, there is this thing called the runner's high, right? That some people experience, other people's don't. Um, it's like when you get into this flow state where you're just, it's almost like you're, on another mentally on another level you're kind of having an outer body experience and you just kind of it's this very it's a weird feeling i i I would i've definitely experienced it i don't know if that's the reason why i run but it's it's cool if it happens you know um i would say the other benefit of running is its accessibility like you you know if you're a swimmer you need access to a pool right which can be very either economically taxing because it's expensive to have a gym membership or it's not right. widely available, you know, to be a cyclist, how much does a bike cost, right? A few hundred bucks all the way up to fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 for a pro bike. Like to, to be a runner, literally you don't even need shoes, right? I mean, obviously it's great if you have shoes, but you don't, you literally don't even need shoes. You can just run anywhere in the world, you know? I mean, I hope you don't do it barefoot, I but mean. there are definitely people who do do barefoot. And I have <laughs> yeah. tried running barefoot on the boardwalk and stuff at beaches and things like that. But, but, but the point is it's, it's, very inclusive you know right i mean don't, don't run barefoot like in central park but there are definitely people who do that too 
Oh, really? Yeah. I, I forget. Okay, so again, the three of us being blind, we don't necessarily see everything, but I, yes, there are definitely people who run barefoot in Central Park. Isn't it dirty, though? Or, or? It's the pavement. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So I, I would say, and we're going to do an episode on swimming in the future, and maybe we'll tackle other sports as well that we are into, uh, yeah. cycling, cross, uh, obstacle course, whatnot. Uh, this is the first episode we're doing on fitness, and it's about running. And I think it's appropriate that it's about running because it's the most accessible sport out of any of these, I think. But let's not, also, go ahead. Sorry. let's not also forget the social benefit to it, too. Oh, definitely. I mean, with any sport, right? Whether you're anything. You, have, you go yeah. to get together with friends and you do it. You know, like some of the best yeah. experience I had was, you know, heading to the park with a bunch of friends and doing a bike ride or a run or anything. So. Yeah, but I feel like some people might think, oh, I don't feel like getting myself just to go out running. So just telling people out there that, you know, if you, if you don't want to do it alone, so it's good to go out with friends and do it. That's a great way to stay consistent, actually. If, you, if you're able to make a schedule with, with a group of people, you know, either join a local, a, a, a local running group or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and it might seem kind of daunting at first, but honestly, most runners, some are, some are kind of douchey, you know, douchebags and, and, and rude and whatnot. I will not lie. There are definitely those types of people. But for the majority of the, the running, you know, sport community, like, just find yourself some some good, friendly people. Most are pretty chill, and, and that's a great way to meet new friends. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, before, any anything else to add before we get into actually, like, how do you start running? No, no, no. So, okay. Um, actually, I have one thing. Um, there's a there's a saying in in, in the sport of cycling, where it is, uh, it never gets easier. The more you train, you just get faster. And I that, I, I laugh at that a little bit because the, the the impression is like you're always working at the same sort of levels of intensity, right? Yeah. So if you want to get faster, it doesn't actually get much easier. You just go faster. It doesn't. However, that, exactly. I think. Thank you for for that. Yes, that's true. But I think that's true for people who are past the beginner stage, right? If you're a beginner, there's there's the whole like experience, the first six months to a year that you're running, where mm-hmm. you're like your body has never experienced what it feels like to run. You know, push through these boundaries. So yep. I, I think it actually does get easier within the first year. Um, all that to say that if you do your first run and you are absolutely in pain, it does get a lot better. So don't be yes. turned off just because, you know, the first run or two it's, is hard. Now, that being said, um, <coughs> that being said, uh, if you're... Cigarettes, dude. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yeah. if you're uh if you're training and you're constantly training yeah it never gets easier if you're constantly training to go fast and fast but say you first started off running at a i don't know 12 minute to 11 minute pace and uh yes it's hard and you train you train you train to run to like a nine or eight minute pace and it still feels the same as if you run at 12 minute or 11 minute pace but then if you decide that there's a time when you have to do an easy run, um, which is a very relaxed run, and you go back to that 11 to 12 minute pace you're running, then that's a very then that will feel easy. Like you'll notice yeah. that oh wow this this feels so easy. I remember when I first did 11 or 12 minute pace, it was very hard. So that's a very good point, and I think that that feeds into recognizing. I think it's easy to be like oh I'm always feeling like I'm dead after my workouts. So that must mean I'm not improving, even if, you know, w- objectively your speeds are getting faster. So yes, you are improving. I mean, we're like jumping around. This is like, it's like, you know, mental, like psychology stuff, yeah. but like, yes, recognize, recognize your improvements wherever they are. And, oh my God, like we can go so many directions like this. Like <laughs> I was, I had a very long discussion recently about what actually constitutes progress, right? Like we have, I mean, uh, whatever, it'll take a long time to get into it. But basically, what, is, what means you're getting faster? Is it a time, like your, your top speed getting faster? Is it the, the amount you're able to sustain a threshold pace? Is it the heart rate? Like if you're able to do the same pace but at a lower heart, you know what I mean? Like there's so many different ways to constitute progress. So don't get into the mindset of just, oh, I have to hit this new number or this new number. You know, there's, there's a lot of different ways. 
anyway, that's a lot more complicated than what we need to do. <laughs> Let's go to the basics, which is just oh. how do you get started running? Yeah, what's up, Simon? Uh, um, do you guys hear a vacuum cleaner in the background? Yes, we chance? do. It's all good. Oh. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, how do we get started running, right? What are the most basic questions? Now, Melissa, as someone who does not run, what's, what, what are the top questions that come to your head if, if all of a sudden you're going to decide, <sighs> okay, I'm going to start running? What do you want to uh, know? Uh, you're our token, not like un- inexperienced runner. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I'm wondering first if there's a time of day. Like, should I do it when I wake up? Should I do it like after I eat? Should I, you know, later in the um, evening? Good, good point. I think whatever will help you be more consistent within reason. So I wouldn't do it right before you go to sleep, obviously. And I wouldn't mm-hmm. do it right after you eat. But besides those two things, whether like you do it, you know, in the morning before you work or go to classes or during your lunch break or in the evening before dinner, I think any of that's fine. Just whatever is easier for you to stick to, you know? Okay. As a general um, rule, mm-hmm. I, I find it that people will be more consistent if they work out earlier because then less things get in the way as the day goes on. It's like savings. Yes. Pay, pay yourself first, AKA your savings first and then do other things. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then how long, how fast, um, for the eat for each workout. Yes. How many times? Oh, wait, so, you said three times a week? Or yeah. Is that after? So I, I would say, well, obviously, again, if, if it's the question of you either running once a week or you not, are you running zero, obviously run once a week, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to know the ideal place to start, I would start by running two to three times a week. And very, very loosely, you can structure them as one being a shorter, slightly more intense run and the other one being a longer but less intense run, right? So an example of that would be, say you're, say you're only able to run five minutes at a time before you have to start and walk, right? So that first run, let's say like Tuesday, that run, you would run, if, you're, if your max is five minutes, then I would say run three minutes at a pace that you would be able to do for five minutes, right? So run three minutes, walk two minutes, run three minutes, walk two minutes, and just flip back and forth and do that for like 30 to 40 minutes, right? And obviously you can, like, you can tell I'm being kind of vague and that's, that's the point, right? You need, like, listen to what your body is telling you in the moment, right? If, if you feel like you're about to die, then okay, maybe pull it back. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to win a race that day, you know? Mm. So, but, so flip back and forth between those two. Um, the, the second running day, say like a Friday or even Saturday morning on the weekend, you would do it a little longer, maybe like a 45 minute run, maybe to like 45 minutes to an hour. And for that one, you would try to pull that pace back. So that pace that you can only do for five minutes, try to run a little slower than that, which is actually sounds a lot easier than it is. It's very hard to run slower, yeah, for, especially for people who aren't used to it. But just try to do that and just try to run that five minutes without dying and then after you get good at that, right, the next week, try to push it out to like seven or eight minutes and 10 minutes and 15 minutes. So the, the goal of that second run would be to just elongate that time that you're able to run. And so for because that's the purpose, it doesn't matter how fast you run, a.k.a. run as slow as you need, you know? Okay. Is there any detriment to music? No, I love beginning? music when I run. I, th- I think, that there, again, there's, you know, you Google anything within the sport community, there's always controversy, right? There's controversy about everything. Controversy about if you, drink, if you, if you should drink water or not. So if you Google, <laughs> should you listen to music? Yes, there is controversy around that. Honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. Listen to music if it helps you run. Well, I mean, don't you say, though, that, like, uh, for example, when I, think when I did my outdoor run, uh, you had said not to run with music, but, like, if I'm doing an uh, indoor run on the treadmill, then it's okay, because you said, like, on an outdoor run, you're supposed to okay, focus Okay, first more. of all, you were training for a half marathon, your second half oh. marathon, so it's a little different. But second of all, I said that because you were running with a group of people, oh, right? Okay. And so to right, socialize, right. right, you don't really run with music. Second right, of all, right. if you want to maximize the music's effect, a.k.a., like, because music pumps you up, right? Yeah. So if you want to maximize that effect, then save it for your indoor run so you get the extra motivation from the indoor. Right. Right. So that, that's something you can do as well. But as a general rule Wait, of thumb, are you saying that people are more motivated outside? No, people are more motivated. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
especially if you so like where we run a central park there are loops in the park that you choose right based on the distance so if you want to do a four mile distance there's a four mile loop that you can take and so uh-huh. if you run that four miles and if you're two miles in or three miles in like if if you stop you still have to get around the park to where you started to, to go home mm. versus a treadmill yeah. it's so easy just to hit the stop button and just and get, get off, off. <laughs> and also just so boring. wouldn't that make it more motivating to 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 do no, it the treadmill's boring as hell. you're it staring it's, at the same you know really boring yeah but you're blind so so you're staring at the same thing what do you mean that no, because on the road, no. you're going around, you're hearing the trees, the road's like winding yes. right, left, you're going uphill, and little down. You're hearing like different bands be playing like in right. Central Park sometimes. You're hearing the conversations, or... the people going by, like it's totally yeah, different. It, it is. Versus running in a treadmill. Sounds it's just, like it's, more it's, work. It's boring. Yeah. It's, yeah, it is definitely more work outdoor, uh, indoors on a treadmill. No. Because again, it doesn't break no. you up, right? <laughs> so that's interesting you think that, because again, you not having run either one, it's interesting that you think that it would be harder outdoors. Yeah, because like you said, you can't stop. You have to. Well, exactly. you, you, at that's least you have easier. to walk back. No, that's okay. That's I, I think, daunting. I think where what's happening here is you are. I think you're discounting the importance of mental engagement and how mental running is. You know what I mean? Like physically, yes, oh. physically running a treadmill might be easier because you don't have to worry about the side to side. Right, all you get is running straight. But and mentally, also you can just you're so stop much more engaged you when you're outdoors that it becomes a lot easier. Okay. You know, I, yeah. I think you're. Well, I just think that if you're if you are too tired, if you tr- if you do something that you find out is a little too much for you, you can just stop and sit back on your couch. But with this, you have to either walk back or run back or. I don't, right, so it makes you, know, you finish get a workout. horse-drawn carriage. Yeah, so that's more, to me, that would be more intimidating because then, you know, I might not want to do it if if there's a possibility of me being stranded with pain in my legs trying to get back to where I was. Pain? In, no, you just walk back. Yeah, but I was running, so now my legs hurt, and now I have to walk back to where I was. I guess it's... A, All right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People, I mean, again, as you see, we have different opinions, right? So, which is totally fine because people are different. I think for the for the majority of people, they will prefer running outdoors because, again, it's it's just more like mentally interesting and stimulating. But there are definitely people who prefer running indoors on a treadmill. Ironically, well, yeah. <laughs> some pro triathletes, <laughs> which is very strange. But anyway, um, cool. So that's two times a week. If you want to add a third workout. Then, um, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I don't know what that was. Anyway, um, if you want to add a third workout, honestly, I would add sort of the in between of the two. So the first one, we'll call it like interval training, right? And it sounds kind of daunting, interval training, because it sounds, you know, like oh, I'm doing a, a very intense interval thing. Uh, all all it is is you're switching back and forth between intense running and not intense running. Uh, the, the weekend run is a longer duration run, right? Where we're trying to push out that time. And it doesn't matter if we're running barely fa- uh, faster than a walk. The speed does not matter. Um, so for, for the third run, say a Thursday run, uh, we want to kind of combine the two. And I would add that after you ran for a few weeks um, and try to do a mixture of the two. So if your intervals are say three minutes, right? And you're starting to like kind of push the pace on those three minute ones, Let the Thursday run be a longer one, like a 10 minute, 15 minute where you're running at a pace that you can hold for that 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then you're resting for like three to five minutes. And whether that rest is a very slow jog or walk either way, like that, you know, you're just having a longer interval, which trains a different energy system, which we can get into another time. Make sense. Yep. Next question, Melissa, what else is, what else is in your way to run? (laughs) <laughs> um, just the mental c- perception of working out, but I think that's a whole other episode. Um, in terms of running though, I, I mean, we could talk about know, mental if that's a barrier for you as a person oh, who, like, I mean, absolutely. I've supposedly tried to do athletic stuff with you guys before, because that's just kind of what happens in this 
and, and your presence. But um, I guess the only other running thing before we move on to that, if you do want to, um, would be what happens afterward. Do you, because I've seen you do those roller things. Is that necessary for everybody? Oh, I see what you're recovery. Saying. You want oh, to talk yeah. about that a little bit, Simon? What do you do for what do you do for recovery personally? <clears throat> As a person who has gotten foot injuries, um, I do a foot. So there's a foam roller and a foot roller. Um, you use both to roll out. The foam roller you use to roll out your legs, calves, back, um, and the foot roller you use to roll the bottom of your feet. So um, what I I would do those and then I would do a couple of stretches after. Um, and that would be like calf stretches, some hamstring stretches, some uh, quads. I mean, I, do you want me to get into the specifics of how to do each one or not now? Like, no, we could. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's easy to YouTube, like how do you do a quad stretch stuff? And we could definitely. Right. Use, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just so uh, before you go you on, do that just before for those every... who don't know, a, a, mm. a foam roller is basically a cylindrical tube that looks like a, a large version of a paper towel roll, uh, but it's hard. And so you like roll your limbs, kind of like a rolling pin for baking. And a yeah, foot roller is just basically a very small version of that that you ro- that you put under your foot on the ground and you like roll your foot back and forth in it. Can you use an that. everyday object if you don't have that, like a bottle or a soda can? Yes, yeah, so if you uh, freeze uh, like a water bottle in the freezer, you can use that and it adds a little bit of coldness too, which is kind of nice. You can uh-huh. use a jar. Um, yeah, just anything cylindrical, like a PVC pipe. Yeah. Um, just so you guys know, there's two versions of a foam roller. There's a very soft one and then there's kind of more hard one with like spikes. Um, the hard one's awesome. The hard one is much better. <laughs> spikes? That sounds good. Because it feels a lot good. Think like massage, right? Do you want someone kind yeah. of like tickling your shoulders? Do you want someone like digging in, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, it takes a minute to get used to, but it, it really, it, it feels good. Yes. Uh, okay, is that so all you do, do you Simon? Have to... mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask, is that, do you have to do the stuff that he describes? Uh, um, it is if you want to provide, it... prevent injury. Um, if you're if you're someone who is prone to injury, then yes, there are people who don't do that stuff at all, and they're completely fine. But because I know I'm a lot more prone to getting injured, I do. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- well, okay, let me, let me caveat that a little bit. Um, if you're only running one or two times a week, even three times a week, and and you're running at a, you know, it's it's hard, but you're not killing yourself, right? The, you, you're probably fine. Like, choosing, if, if the sneakers that you run in cause your foot pain, or if, if they're somehow incorrect, which we could talk about sneakers in a second, but for example, like, if you're, if you're ch- running in, in bad sneakers or bad shoes, my opinion, right, it's all opinion, my opinion and what I've seen from the past is that is so much more likely to cause injury than you not rolling your quads out or something, right? Like, there there comes a point where, yes, that type of recovery thing is important, but I would not say it's a requirement for someone who's only running two to three times a week, right? You'll feel better if you do it, Definitely, right? If you do like a little mobile, like a stretch routine after you're done running, you'll definitely feel better. But saying that you'll get injured, uh, there's some question marks there. I definitely, I mean, I know some, I mean, a dude that I did speed work with last week, right? His marathon time is, I think he's like a 235, 240 marathon, basically a semi-pro. He has not touched a foam roller in uh, about probably like two, three years. Yeah, right? but I'm pretty sure I've gotten injured from just even running like three times a week. But how do you know it's from not rolling? Oh, Right, like uh, even even coaches I have like they again granted they're cycling, but uh, as long as you have proper progression, which is another very very common source of injury, right? Improper progression, meaning you progress your running too fast, either you add too many miles too soon or you add too much speed too soon. Improper progression is a is a huge cause of injury, a lot bigger than not rolling out your quads, you know, so. I would say yes, important, but don't don't like go out and buy every recovery tool under the world and neglect those other things that are arguably more important, such as progressing your you know workouts appropriately and just understanding basic mechanics. You know, mm-hmm. um, is there anything else you do, Simon, for recovery? Uh, no. Um, 
Let me think. I I let's see. I do roll, like you said, quads. I mean, you have your boots, right? And like, yeah, I have other. boots. They're basically like these these things that go from my feet up to all the way like my upper legs, and they have like attach a little compressor and they compress your legs and they squeeze them really tight. They're awesome. Totally not necessary. <laughs> like absolutely not necessary. Um, if anything, they let me they let me repeat efforts day after day. You know what I mean? Like I'm able to if I do a hard training session today and I use the boots, I'm able to do another hard training session tomorrow. Mm. So unless you're training every day at a hard level, it's total it's completely not necessary. I would say my favorite pieces of recovery gear, um, or I should say my favorite, like the basic ones that I would get first, is uh, a yoga mat, just because it's nice to not just like slide around on a wooden floor when you're doing stuff on the floor, like stretching and different mobility stuff and you know core work and things. That's another important thing, doing stuff for the core, just because you're running does not mean you can neglect other parts of your body, right? Um, so doing like a core routine once a week is, is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so a yoga mat, a, a foam roller, Jesus, Simon, <laughs> a foam roller, um, which is awesome for, again, rolling out the muscles, not, not absolutely necessary, but it's, 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 you know, it's good to do, uh, feels good. And after that, you can kind of pick and choose what makes you feel good. Like there are these vibrating gun things they kind of point at different parts of your muscle and it'll like vibrate the crap out of them that feels really oh. good um it, it's kind of like kid in the candy store when you go to these sporting mm. stores and you see everything that people have come up with and thought of to help recovery you know right right it's, oh it's, my yeah so so that's is that that's kind of the three the three. Th oh wait, were you going to talk about sneakers? Because I guess oh, before, yeah, that's a good during, point. and so, after. So, okay, just like I said, with anything else, right? It's super controversial. Sneakers. Should you run with support, without support? Minimalist shoes, high heel to drop. Uh, FYI, a um, a drop, like a millimeter drop. When you see on a shoe, for example, a zero drop or a four millimeter drop or eight millimeter drop, all that is referring to. That's a very common thing you would see when you're trying to buy running shoes. Um, all that refers to is the height difference from the heel to the ball of your foot. So a zero millimeter drop would be that the heel and the ball of the foot is exactly the same height off the ground. A four millimeter would mean that the heel is four millimeters higher than the ball of your foot. Um, I generally run in a zero drop shoe. For me, I feel like that's that works with my you know, feet and legs better if i if i run in a higher heel to uh heel to toe like drop um my calves get really tight and i'm just not able to generate the same amount of force that's totally me right granted i'm very i'm used to running like running around when i was a kid without shoes on like my feet are definitely stronger than average there are people who if they try to run with zero drop shoes they would get injured for sure so it's not something like, oh, this is definitely correct and this is wrong. Most running stores these days will let you go in, put the shoes on, and run in a treadmill uh, in the store to try them out. So honestly, do that. A, a good sort of mental thing is that if your shoes, if, if after you're done running, if your foot is in pain or if you're running and you feel a particular part of the shoe pressing up on your foot for example if you're running and you feel like the arch of the shoe pressing uncomfortably up into the arch of your foot that's a sign that maybe your shoe has too much charge support you know so as long as there's no acute pain or like discomfort while running and that after you're done running your feet don't hurt in a particular spot you're probably fine Right. And I mean, it, it sounds like a lot, but you'll, you'll notice, right. If you're running and you're like, Oh my God, like there's, these shoes are pushing up in, in the center of my foot. Then maybe like, don't ignore it. Cause it's telling you mm. something, you know? And so that, yeah, that's the basics on sneakers. Okay, cool. 
Cool. And anything, is it strange? My big thing when I did go out that one time, thanks Simon for reminding me, was clothing. I don't tend to own many sports clothes. So is it just okay to do like comfy leggings or I, I don't I don't yeah. know how this works. Um, definitely, again, right? The whole awesome part about running is that's very accessible. Like you don't have to go out buy it, buy a bunch of expensive equipment. So, if this is, if it's your first time or first couple times running, you can just show up in anything, yoga stuff, like comfortable workout. How much will I be judged? I mean, <laughs> first of all, don't worry about being judged because that doesn't matter. Second of all, the fact that you're even out there is awesome. Third of all. There you'd be surprised about with. you'd be surprised what kind of weird stuff people show up to run with. It's very like there are dudes and like they just came out backpacking from the Colorado mountains. There are dudes who like you know wearing like surfer gear. It's just it's a whole mix of stuff people wear. So and I mean there are people who just run in shorts. Yeah, exactly. Well. There are people. Yeah, the the thing with temperature because obviously like you don't want to you don't want overheating to hold you back, right? Mm. So you if a, and obviously it's hard to do during the summer, but if a, if at all possible try to be a little chilly before you start huh. because if you're a little chilly before you start, that means that once you start, you'll obviously you'll naturally heat up a little bit and you'll be at a comfortable heat. If you're <coughs> totally fine before you start, that means you're going to be uncomfortably hot once you start running. Ah. Oh, so huh. yeah. So if you're going to like, if you're running the midwinter, bring a mass, bring like a big coat, right? Bring a hat, bring everything like be, be toasty warm. But underneath mm-hmm. it, run clo- like bring wear clothing that y- you're gonna be chilly, right? Like I bring a big coat and everything, and right before I start running, if it's like snowing, I'll take <coughs> all the stuff off, right? Leave it on the bench, and if I stand there for ten minutes, I'm shivering because I'm cold, and that's how I want to be, because once I start running, I'll be fine, you know. Mm. Um, oh, one oh, other thing, no, uh-huh. uh, okay. let me touch on real quick: nutrition yep. or like running a Gatorade or any sort of fuels or things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Honest, I mean, if you're just starting off, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. If something says recovery drink on the bottle, it's not a recovery drink. It's just sugar. It's just, you know, carbohydrates. Yeah. Like, just don't just app. Just don't worry about it. There are people who run for hours without fuel. Is that the smartest thing if you're trying to, like, break a, break a personal record? No, there's better things to do. But if you're just starting out, just, just don't worry about it. For the most part, okay. it's just sugar that you don't need. Ah, well, actually, my question was kind of related to that. Um, There's a story from my childhood, and granted, this has to do with a bird, but it was very hot, and there was a bird on our balcony, and it looked half dead, and then we gave it water, and then it drank, and then it died, and that kind of scarred me for life. And I'm wondering, someone said something about the heart being pumping too fast or hot, What I don't know. So I'm wondering, how do you safely hydrate or is that even a concern or was i just lied to as a child um what, what do you mean is there anything hydrate? about is there anything about drinking while your heart is still no. pumping really hard no, from no, really no, okay matter. no okay great um yeah drink water whenever um obviously for, from a performance standpoint you probably don't want to chug a ton of water if you're going to run directly afterwards just because you don't want all that water sloshing around in your stomach yeah mm. um if you were going to run first thing in the morning uh, if you are a beginner, it might be good to have a little bit of food before the run just because mm-hmm. you're not used to exercising with nothing in you. So you might feel kind of like no energy, right? Mm. So in that case, all you want is some a little bit of sugar. And you can get that from eating like half a banana. You can get it from eating like half a, a rice cracker with some, you know, honey or peanut butter on it. Just something light, something that'll just be in your stomach. Huh. Um, I really did r- think that there was something about not drinking too fast once if you're if you've just done physical activity. I've always been told to slow down drinking or to drink a little bit. That's weird. Okay. Nah, I mean it's again you probably don't want to drink a ton just because you don't want it sloshing around in you. Yeah, not but, not for that. More like the whole heart thing. I don't know why. Okay, no, weird myths. Ton of people dr- All right, stuff. great myths dispelled. Yeah, and if your run if your runs less than forty five minutes, again, you you pretty much don't need anything. You know, if your run is more than an hour, then you can have something like at the thirty minute mark and before you start. But it doesn't have to be a lot. You know, it could be a little bit. Mm. Just have a little little like a little chew or little stroop waffle thing which is kind of like a honey pocket waffle that you have in a packet 
for like runners and stuff. They even have little packets of maple syrup that I started using big in the cycling community, but, um, kind of looks like a plastic (laughs) packet, like a, like a ketchup packet, uh, from McDonald's kind of thing that you rip Mm -hmm. the top off and you squirt it and it's just maple syrup and you just put it in your mouth and it's just sugar for your system that, um, Instead of goo, because like goos and gels, uh, yeah. sometimes <laughs> I like sit don't like poorly. Goo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't either. So, so, the, so like a bit a more digestible version of that would be this like maple syrup stuff, right? You just get off Amazon or whatever. But again, point being is that's completely, completely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Where it's not necessary, not necessary, <laughs> not necessary. completely not necessary. brain brain. Not a uh, not a requirement. Whatever. Not a requirement. <laughs> Not mandatory, whatever the, the opposite of that is. Um, all you need is just 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 the road to run on. You know what I mean? Cool. Um, yeah, I think we. I mean, do you have any? Would you have any other question, Melissa? If you're hypothetically in this situation, you're gonna be like, "Hey, I'm gonna start running. What do I need to know?" Um, no, that's that's it. Would I be or who do you think should be tracking these things? Like tracking mileage, speed. Who do you think should be keeping stats? Um, uh, my I guess would, is people who would want to train for something specific. It but, definitely uh, helps for training to have those types of stats. I wouldn't worry about it the first few weeks because honestly, it's going to change so much and so fast. And you, you're just such an inefficient person, like aerobically, when you first start, mm-hmm. that it pretty much makes no difference. Like the only thing that'll make difference is just time on your feet, time running or even walking in between runs counts as time on your feet. So I just, I wouldn't worry about it for at least the first few weeks, if not more. And after that, they have like expensive running watches and GPS watches and garments and things, which are awesome, but completely not necessary, right? You can get an, a, a free app on your phone that'll basically tell you all the information, right? How fast you're running, the distance, all this stuff. You can get a cheap Bluetooth heart rate monitor off of Amazon for like $30 or something. Uh, that you can pair with your phone, and it'll tell you what your heart rate is. FYI, by the way, I, I don't think it's super necessary to train with heart rate. That's a whole other debate of why I think heart rate is not necessarily, you know, like I I, I rarely train with heart rate, but hmm. some people uh, some people really believe it. But basically, the the short an- the, sh- the short thing is heart rate tells you how hard you're working at something, in a speed mm-hmm. slash power um, metric tells you what what you're actually outputting so mm. if anything on recovery days i mean we're, we're, we're going deep but whatever there's not a word. um yeah anything else any nope. last questions i think that's pretty i mean nope. like just doing what we talked about today i think most people will be able to get to a 5k even 10k i mean dude i did my first marathon running three days a week Oh, Which, yes. thinking back on it now, is completely insane. Not well, not yeah. insane, but like that's kind of yeah. Th- 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 I, I would. You also did it in a very short amount of time since you started running. That's true. I did. I did my first marathon five months after I started running. Which, thinking about it now, is kind of also insane. But yeah. But 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 again, all that to say that people overcomplicate running a lot. I think for the most part, just run. You know what I mean? Mm. Just run, just run, just don't worry about it. You know, if you run okay. and does something doesn't work out, then okay, change it. But don't wor- don't stress about it to the point where you're not going to do it in the first place. You know, if you okay. want to run, if you have that interest, <laughs> then just do it. Yeah, and you'll figure out the details later. You know, right. if a, some if like a specific problem comes up, hey, um, this is happening at this point, then Google it. And you'll find like do ten different opinions. Do you have some resource, <laughs> some places where you like to go for running advice? Uh, yeah, well, honestly, most of my answers come from either my own experience talking to other people that I know who have, you know, experience, whether they be coaches or just good athletes. There isn't like one. So you don't really consult the Internet. If I didn't have other people to ask and, and have like a little brainstorming session. I would definitely Google something. Say if I have a question, like, "Hey, what's the best way to fuel a a you know a, a half marathon race?" Right? I would Google that. I would find like fifteen different responses. I would read all fifteen, 
and figure out sort of a consensus. And the consensus would probably be like four or five different answers, right? Because no one could agree on anything. And mm-hmm. then honestly, I would just try them. Because also at the end of the day, things work for different people. Like different things work mm-hmm. for different people. You know? The way right. I would fuel for a half marathon could be completely different from how another person feels for a half marathon. And we'd both be correct. We would, it would just be different for our, you know, where we are. Yeah, because everyone's body is different, so. So, yeah, and I think that, that phrase is thrown out around, like, oh, yeah, we're all like special snowflakes and things like that. Like, yes, that is kind of true in a way and not true in another way, but, you know, we're, we're all f- adapted to, to carbohydrates and fat in different ways. We are all, all of our energy systems are trained to different levels. We all have different backgrounds. So, yeah, in a way, we all kind of are different. Mm. So, all that to say that trial and error. <laughs> yep. All right. You know, right. and honestly, like you learn a lot when you fail. You know, if you're afraid of failing to the point where you're not willing to trial and error, like you're not going to go far. Let's so talk just, about my half marathon that I did not finish. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Go ahead, Simon. <laughs> I almost forgot so, about that. I did my first half marathon um, with the same guy I mentioned earlier, Anthony, and I got a good time, a time I was really happy with. And that as, was about, as he refers to himself as Coach Agony. Ah, uh, does he? Yes, okay. he does. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Continue, know that. sir. Yes. Um, and I, I was happy with my time. However, I will say um, it was hell. I, I felt like I wanted to die, but I did push. My, well, he pushed me. I pushed myself. Um, Anyway, I got a good time. Second half marathon I did, um, I didn't train for, actually. Oh, yeah, let's let's uh, take it back. So the first half marathon I did, I trained for. Um, what was that? I think I did it for like two months to a month. Do you remember, Chesco? Yeah, it was about two months. And just, just to explain for people, when, when, when people mention when we say we didn't train for, it, didn't, it does not mean we were not running at all before. It just means we yeah. were not doing training specific for that distance leading up to it. Yeah. So the second half marathon, I didn't really train for. I ran like four times a week on the treadmill, but uh, no, no program specific to training for a half marathon. So I get to the day, you know, it's pretty cold outside, cold and wet. Uh, I believe it was raining that day, right? I was drizzling, a little, like misting a yeah. little bit. But it, uh, no, it was definitely cold. It was cold. Um, and so we start running, uh, the first four or five, mi- six miles, maybe go well. And then I, st- I start slowing down. Um, my legs just don't want to go farther. And the, what sucks is cardio wise, like breath wise, I was fine. I was willing to go, but my legs just did not want to go at all. And, um, uh, like we tried stopping my guide tried like digging into my calves just to kind of loosen them up but it didn't work so i had to (coughs) i I wasn't able to finish it and then um what also didn't help was that what i was wearing wasn't very good either the clothing i was wearing um it wasn't very it didn't it wasn't breathable and uh explain it's more chesco like what were um, you wearing i don't remember oh god i don't remember I just know that when I got to Francesco's place on that same day after, uh, I was literally like shivering. He had to put me by a heater. Yeah, no, know. Melissa. So Simon shows up on my doorstep, right? I don't know any of this. I just know that Simon, oh, no. yeah, he DNFs, which means did not finish. Yeah. And so he DNF, he texts, he calls me and he's like, I'm coming over. So his guide brings him over to my place and he's like on my doorstep, just almost <laughs> like, not in a coma, but like completely out of it. Just is not responding very clearly to any. Like he's he's having a problem. So I take him all the way to the back room, and we sit him down like right in front of this big radiator, and he's just kind of like hugging himself in front of this massive radiator, like inches away, with heat just pouring off of it. And Simon's just there shivering, like literally, you can hear him shaking, and he's just there shivering for like at least 20, 30 minutes. And like yes. I get him, like we make him like hot tea and things. He's drinking his hot tea, all that. But it takes him like thirty minutes to, to just wind down. And wow. yeah, it was definitely cold. I will say one of the one of the people that I did the race with, because I also did the race. Uh, she got a she she fractured her her not her femur her um uh the other bone, the, the calf tibia not the the opposite one but whatever she you, she fractured one of the bones in her legs. 
So it was not a good race for anyone. <laughs> but um, it was it was definitely cold, and I'm sure that that's what that helped. We didn't we didn't cruise the new runners, guys. Yeah, no, I know, no, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Uh, if you want to learn anything, it's don't don't get into a half marathon without tr- really training yes. for it, right? Yes. But I mean, that just shows like you you already did a half marathon before that. Yeah. And you had a good time. And what pissed me off more was that my breath was good because usually it's the breath that. It's so painful. It's like I'm out of breath, like I can't breathe, you know. And mentally, I was fine. It's my 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 legs that just didn't want to work. Right, and and sometimes it'll be the opposite, right? Sometimes you are completely out of breath, dying. Like your legs are fine, yeah, but your car car like cardiovascular, you're just done. Right. So, and again, I mean that's another conversation for another time. But like that should train you. That should ter- tell you in terms of what you need to work on, right? Maybe your your cardio is fine, but your legs need a little more training. But yeah. anyway, that's another thing. Um, but having done a half marathon before, it does not guarantee that you can do one, another one. Nope. Right? So don't underestimate the distance <laughs> for everyone out there. Yes, always train. If you did a half marathon and you want to do one six months later or a year later, train for it. Yeah. I think we have, I think we have like memory loss or something when it comes to endurance racing. Because in the, in the heat of my marathons, or even like, half mar- or like any hard race that i do right in the moment yeah i'm basically thinking like i am stupid like why do i do this it is the most <laughs> stupidest insane <laughs> makes yeah. no sense like there it does not add anything to my life like i'm yeah i'm just incredulous at my own stupidity for signing up for this thing and like subjecting myself <laughs> to it but then yeah. when i'm done i sign up for another one so <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, there's just think- something about it I think we forget how bad it is in the moment. And again, okay, we're talking about stupid distances. Like a marathon is a, is an absolutely stupid distance. Like yes. there's no reason for us to do it. We do it anyway, but there's no reason yes. to. Well, I was um, going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you will. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so uh, yeah, we're not talking about like running two three times in the park for just for fun, like chill runs, right? We're talking yeah a, a little bit more painful. But it, it's kind of it's just funny to see different perspectives, you know. It is. It is because in the moment it feels like hell, and then once you do it and you see that you actually were able to do well for you twenty six point two miles, and for me it was when I first did my first one thirteen. It's like I could have never imagined that I'd be doing this when I first started. This is right. so cool, and you just and then, did it. But then you want to see how much farther can you go. So yeah, that's why you sign up for another one <laughs> and another one and another one. So I, I will say it. We were, we were talking about this earlier in terms of like it being harder when you first start. It definitely, <laughs> it gets, e- the, the first one is definitely hardest. Yes. Like my second race of any distance was always easier than the first one of any distance, even though I did it faster the second time. So even though technically it should be harder because I was doing it faster, uh, it was easier mentally, physically. It was easier. I recovered from it a lot faster. You know, like the first marathon I did, I was limping for days. Ab- you know, day. I had to get up. So uh, the marathon, you wake up at you know three four a.m. This is New York City marathon, whatever. I get to bed at like six p.m. I had to wake up again the the next day at four a.m. to try to do a six a.m. radio like interview thing at like for Sirius XM thing. I limped my butt down the stairs of the walk up, down the stairs of the subway. Like it was painful. But the second uh-huh. time it was it was it was still painful, but it was it was kind of fine, you know. I remember so f- it does get easier. Yeah. <laughs> my first half marathon, the day after, I was limping in school too. <laughs> uh, my professor, who was also a runner, was like, "Oh, how'd your run go? Yeah, I can see you're limping." <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So recognize the runners in the crowd. You definitely mm. do. There's a sense <laughs> of illogical insanity about them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Um, oh, one last thing. I feel like this is this is dragging on, so we're going to close it up soon. One last thing I would say, a little word of wisdom from the nutrition side. And th- this is no particular order, but I just thought of this. Um, if you start running and you start burning a ton of calories, saying that it doesn't matter what you eat because you burn it off anyway, a.k.a. I can get away with eating a bunch of crap, oh, uh, yeah. might work in the short term, but <coughs> is setting you up for a long-term failure failure like just because just because from a caloric standpoint you're able to eat whatever you want does not mean you should 
We should do an episode actually on nutrition, which we, we definitely should. We will yeah. do whether that's uh, what you should eat after a workout, you know, what's not good, what is good. And if you really want to eat like the same crap you do, or if you really like your, you know, bottle of ketchup or your whatever, anything, there are alternatives. Dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. Raspberry. What do you mean, food. guys? I thought the only thing we do eat after workouts is all you can eat sushi. <laughs> but see, like that, that's that's not bad, right? Because it's just rice and fish, right? Like. But um, no, we should definitely do a, a, a an episode on nutrition. Yes, both in terms of fitness, but in general, let's like begin. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point, Simon. Good point. Let's let's do that. Um, uh, cool. Any closing thoughts? Cool. Anyone? I think we're Melissa? doing the run tomorrow, aren't we, Simon? Uh, I think we are. Actually, I think Zoe texted me uh, re- earlier, so we should check on that. <laughs> but we might be doing a run. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa, any closing thoughts? Um, this was definitely informative. Um. Still don't know if I'm necessarily convinced to go out and do some, but for those of you who just needed the starting info, I think this should be this should be all that you might need. And probably awesome. more, honestly. This we'll conversation a about maybe we'll do like a get together with, with, with the crew so. and pressure Melissa to run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, cool. All right. Hit us up on Instagram and Facebook at run with chestnut. That is our, uh, podcast name. Also our website, runwithchestnut.com, where you can find all the other info, including links to social media, uh, show notes and the rest of it. Uh, this also, was, yeah, go let's up, not Simon. forget to ask them if you can, please. Leave oh, them. perfect. Go ahead, Simon. Ask, ask the kind people. If you can, please be kind enough to leave a five star review so that, our ratings yeah why why simon why should they (laughs) uh just so our ratings can go up and uh we can get more exposure perfect yes even if you left a five-star review slash rating feel free to steal your spouse's phone and leave one on their phone or on your kids or your parents or anyone around (laughs) you just steal all the phones um and if you're on itunes you have to actually search you cannot do it from the podcast uh thing i don't think i think you need to actually search the podcast again as if you were not subscribed to it you have to yes, like search yes, you do. type in the thing type in run with chestnut and hit leave a review or write this podcast whatever gives a five-star rating review and that's about it all, all right. right all right see y'all next time this is episode 13 time. good stuff peace peace